The following program, Know the Cause, is paid for by Mediatrician Incorporated. That's kind of a brand new set for many of you. This is called our B set. I do the live show. You can type in questions and ask me. How many times have you wanted to ask Doug? We now can help you with that. Uh, Monday and Tuesday afternoons usually, but go to our website, knowthecause.com, and ask away. Watch me live a couple hours a week on this set. Now, today's show is fascinating. Thank you, Dr. Randy Nadu, for coming in and meeting with Dr. Julia Schulenberg. One is a naturopathic doctor, the other a medical doctor, a, uh, a pediatrician. Also, nudging closer to the cause of gut disease. We're going to open with that. Dr. Ross Pelton talks about dysbiosis, tummy problems, gut diseases. Someone asked the other day, does psoriasis have any link to fungus? All that and much more on this, Know the Cause. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Discover the Dr. O'Hara difference. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. You know, what I'm gonna do right now is present old data. This was maybe 10 years ago or so. I, I wrote this uh, PowerPoint presentation to put on television. Remember this television show, I was a dark haired guy with a Fu Manchu mustache 24 years ago when I started this television show. A lot's happened. 23 years ago, Dr. Dave Holland and I wrote this book, The Fungus Link. In it, allergies, arthritis, digestion, respiratory, mental health, heart health, women's health, and pain were addressed as though they had a fungal etiology. And I was just reading this. Intestinal fungi and the diseases they mimic. Is it Crohn's disease or is it fungus? I wrote that in 1999. So let's continue on here and see where we go. I was helping so many people back at the hospital here in Dallas in clinical nutrition, working for three physicians in a big practice by changing their diet. Their long-term skin symptoms got so much better when they changed their diet and took antifungal medications that sometimes the doctors would agree with me on. Okay, so we're knowing the cause. Nudging closer to the cause of gut disease. Ulcer is a sore on the skin or on a mucous membrane. Col, as in colon, is part of the large intestine extending from the cecum down to the rectum. Itis is inflammation. So ulcerative colitis is a sore or sores uh, on or in the colon, and it's inflamed, and it hurts. Many of you have various gut diseases, Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, there's a whole bunch of them. And you know, what your gastroenterologist doesn't know is what I'm gonna teach right here. And I hope this goes right in your ears and absorbed in your brain and you rest on this for a few days because you and I, all of us in America, know someone with a tummy problem. Severe, minor, uh, acute, chronic, it happens. And we need to know, folks, when you throw poison into your stomach, it's gonna have a bad effect. Well, Doug, I eat only the purest foods. The purest foods, i.e. peanut, corn, wheat, in America, can sometimes be impregnated with a, with a, a fungal poison. So let's talk about that. The symptoms, and I got this off WebMD, a medical website, symptoms of ulcerative colitis, diarrhea, rectal bleeding, abdominal pain, constipation, loss of appetite, fever, weight loss, anemia, complications outside the GI tract like joint pain, eye problems, skin rashes, liver disease. As I read, having never had a problem like this, as I read these symptoms, I hurt for all of those patients, the doctor's patients that I saw. For 22 years, I worked in uh, clinical uh, nutrition. Now, what causes ulcerative colitis? This should shock no one. It comes out of the same medical website, uh, WebMD. Experts aren't sure. Oh, we'll treat you, we'll see you, we'll charge you, but we don't know. They think it might be caused by the immune system overreacting to normal bacteria in the digestive tract. 
uh, or other kinds of bacteria and viruses may cause the disease. You don't see fungus. Well, a virus, oh, bacteria. God put commensal organisms in your intestine, those which get along with each other. Fungi, candida, the good candida albicans, which can be activated with antibiotics, alcohol, many other things, and bacteria. As an adult, we have a couple of pounds of this uh, bacteria and fungus in our intestine. All we address is the bacteria in medicine. Why isn't the word fungus mentioned? Here's a headline from 2010. Some food associated mycotoxins, fungal poisons, as potential risk for factors uh, in humans predisposed to chronic intestinal inflammation. And what this says, folks, is we've got to start thinking about fungus in the gut. We know that much about bacteria because we graduated from medical school. We know this much about viruses as we've learned the last few years. And we know that much about fungus. And yet God put it in our intestines, vaginal tract, mucous membrane tissues when we were born. While Cornell Medicine, they're talking, believe it or not, about taking fecal samples from one person and putting them in another. Higher, higher levels of a type of fungus in the gut are associated with better outcomes for patients with a type of inflammatory bowel disease called ulcerative colitis who are treated with gut microbes from healthy donors. According to a new study in Wild Medicine, you know, this is, uh, I got a better idea. The guy who wrote this book is a friend of mine, anti, boy that's heavy, antifungal therapies. Dr. Ganum out of Case Western, he's a mycologist. He studies new drugs and works in his laboratories to approve them or question them. Here's what he says. New study links gut fungi to intestinal inflammation and Crohn's disease. New treatment options for Crohn's, this isn't fecal transplantation. New treatment options for Crohn's disease patients may be on the horizon thanks to research linking common fungal pathogens to inflammatory bowel disease. The next step in our research is to study other fungal organisms within the gut and then antifungal therapies in patients with this devastating condition. Folks, what he's talking about is using drugs, not someone else's stool sample. Drugs, and I'm talking about a diet, and this doctor knows the diet also. Stop feeding the fungus and start killing the fungus. Does that make sense? Give it a month try and see if that doesn't make you smile. They're uncomfortable, their life is miserable. And Dr. O'Hara's is really the Quick. fast answer. The, the Dr. O'Hara's advantage really gives fast relief from these gut problems. Uh, folks, joining me right now is Dr. Ross Pelton, longtime friend of mine, 18 years we go back. Wow, we're getting old together, it's amazing. <laughs> PhD degree, registered pharmacist, certified clinical nutritionist. You put those together and shake them up, and you've got a guy who knows drugs, and he you knows how food and right supplements affect the body, the whole body. And we want to talk a little bit right now about tummy but about the immune system also. Yeah. So Dr. Pelton, let's uh, get started here. I love, by the way, your graphics. They're very educational, thank you. But it's important to, for people to know that 70% of your immune system cells in your body are located in your gut. So you gotta have a healthy gut in order to have a healthy immune system and a, a good life, a healthy longevity. And uh, the human microbiome is the term we use for the whole ecosystem in the gastrointestinal system. Okay, yep. And dysbiosis is just a term that relates to people that have gastrointestinal distress. Gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, inflammation, pain in the gut. These are the most common complaints of people that go into doctor's offices. And inflammation leads to leaky gut or intestinal permeability, and that's the doorway to all sorts of health problems. And a healthy gut is the answer to helping to prevent these problems. Can I ask you, as a pharmacist and as a PhD, and certainly as a nutritionist, are doctors understanding, remember 18 years ago, you and I kind of sat and had a cup of joe and we were talking about, gee, I wish doctors understood the damaging effect of antibiotics. Thanks, really, to Dr. O'Hara, a leader in the field, yeah. Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, they're getting it, aren't they? 
I mean, slowly. Yeah, uh, but that's some of good. them are, but not nearly enough of them. And you know, people that have these types of problems, they'd like to get fast relief. They're uncomfortable. Their life is miserable. And Dr. O'Hara's is really the Quick. fast answer. The, the Dr. O'Hara's advantage really gives fast relief from these gut problems. It's it's so exciting. My producer, who's been with me 18 years, 19 years, keeps a box here of Dr. O'Hara's Pro Box. Keeps a bunch of them at home. Buys them, you know, in a in a market. And uh, if he has any distress, tummy problems, well, he's got grandkids, I have grandkids, we have kids. So you get to eat a little different. Two or three, he says, he chews them up, swallows them down within 10, 15 minutes. Right, John? Yeah, right. And so it's really, really good what you folks have put together here. This is fast relief from tummy issues. Yeah, and what I'd like to emphasize, Doug, for fast relief from these gut problems, mm -hmm. gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, inflammation, pain, just purchase a 30 count box of Dr. Here's probiotics. Take two capsules twice a day for a week, double the dose. Direct delivery of over 500 of these postbiotic metabolites, you will experience the Dr. Here's advantage. You will get fast relief from these types of gastrointestinal gut problems. And that's the Dr. Here's advantage. I've read about Dr. Here's probiotics are not only prebiotic, they are probiotic, good bacteria, and then they have postbiotic uh, properties. What does that mean? Do they leave some good guys here? Well, they, they, people know about probiotics, and prebiotics are the food for your probiotic bacteria. Okay. Postbiotic metabolites are the compounds the bacteria make when they metabolize and digest the dietary fibers and other compounds in foods. So these, these are the metabolites that really control and regulate your immune system. They influence every single organ system in the body, especially your brain and your immune system. So there's two parts to the puzzle. Probiotic bacteria have to have the correct dietary components to make these postbiotic metabolites. Dr. O'Hara directly delivers these postbiotic metabolites. Here's a booklet I wrote that people can get a free copy of by going to naturalpharmacist.net forward slash O'Hara books. Mm -hmm. and it reviews Dr. Hero's life in postbiotic metabolites. So this isn't the only book you've written. You've written a lot of papers, a lot of books. You've been involved in studies. And Dr. Pelton, I think this is one of your best because as I was perusing it, I didn't realize it was your paper. It was Dr. O'Hara's Dr. paper. Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. In a very respected journal, Journal of Functional Foods, they talk about the anti-fatigue effect. We talked about tummy and immune system. The anti-fatigue effect of Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. The findings, did they astound you? In a human clinical trial, people taking Dr. O'Hara's probiotics for 12 weeks reduce their level of fatigue. They have more energy. Who doesn't want more energy, Doug? And I love what your one graphic said today. What have you to lose, folks? GERD, tummy problems, belching, gas. Buy the little box. Take two twice a day and see if within four or five days you aren't smiling ear to ear. God bless you. What a great company to work for. Thanks for coming in, Dr. Pelton. Good to be with you, Doug. Thank you. Howdy. Dr. John Trowbridge here from Houston. I need to share what frustrates me, especially when younger people are suffering. As a leading specialist in integrative medicine, I have to help people who've not been helped elsewhere. Now, what frustrates me could be keeping you suffering for years when doctors simply haven't a clue. A talented young woman came to see me after several specialists didn't have a clue about the cause of her many problems. Severe skin lesions, gut pains, migraine headaches, muscle and joint pains, more and more. She and her parents were desperate to restore her health so she could have an enjoyable and productive life. She incidentally found relief from avoiding grains and foods containing gluten. Now, many who've suffered found similar relief thinking they're allergic, but you need to realize that grains support the growth of yeast. Millions around the world suffer with multiple and confusing symptoms due to the yeast syndrome. Their conditions worsen when doctors fail to diagnose and properly treat the cause. Share with your doctor the books that my friend Doug has written and watch his excellent shows. To recover from your problems, you need to know the cause. And you need to finally find a doctor who skillfully offers you choices now for better health. Until next time, this is the Yeast Doctor reminding you that when life is your choice, failure is not an option.
Backstage with Doug Kaufman Live. The live shows yield a lot of fascinating questions. One I get often is one that Susan asks. Is psoriasis a fungal condition? That's what brought me to Texas from California. My family was young in 1986. Wow, I'm old. Packed up the kids and off we went to Texas on a five-year contract with a dermatologist out here in Dallas. He was very important, a prominent uh, doctor on the psoriasis board. And yet, look, doctors will tell you, we can't just give people a cortisone shot in the hip and a a box UV light and send them home. How long are they gonna keep coming in? And it works for a few days or a week and then they come in again. People wanna know the etiology. I named the television show, Know the Etiology. Well, know the cause, same thing. What's the cause of psoriasis? We found, and the doctors approved this, all of them I worked with, we found that if you restricted carbohydrates from the patient's diet, kind of a keto, but I allowed green apples and grapefruit and things like that because I didn't want to put those patients into ketosis. Uh, it, it, that diet and then antifungal drugs, and in two weeks the patients would come back, and I gotta tell you, there were tears in those exam rooms. They've been fighting psoriasis and it's on their back and their knees and behind their neck for years and years, and that program improved it. More of the same helped. But eventually, folks, what we tried to do is get people off medications, their side effects to medications. And that's when I went to herb school. And I realized, wow, herbs are antifungal. And niacin and folate, the B vitamins, are antifungal. And resveratrol and olive leaf extract, and the list was almost endless. Vitamin D3 had antifungal properties. So did we need the medications or did we need the diet? What many doctors I've taught this information to in the past few years have told me is, I think you're onto something with this diet. If I had psoriasis, I would ask my doctor for an antifungal medication for a couple of weeks while following the Kaufman One diet. If there's improvement, bingo, you didn't cure it. But you finally have resolved there's hope. Two more weeks, six more weeks, two more years, and I think you'll find this problem diminishing. If it has, a fungal cause. Friends, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for being with us today. My new best friend, Randy Nadu, he's a pediatrician, uh, joins us today with Dr. Julia Schulenberg. Uh, Julia is a naturopathic doctor, and Dr. Nadu is a pediatrician, board certified in pediatrics. So here you have an MD, and then you have an RN, comma, uh, MD, naturopathic doctor. Good to have you both on board here. Uh, why don't physicians send patients to what a, an allopathically trained doctor would think is, a, is an alternative practitioner? I know you do. You and Dr. Schulenberger have a great relationship. But why don't doctors? Where is the void in them referring more? Yeah. The, the void is, is that in traditional medicine, we have it down in terms of how we communicate with our traditional specialist. Um, there's always that great communication. If I have a patient with a unique uh, need, whether it's cardiology or dermatology, we get those notes back. I think a weakness in the alternative arena is that naturopaths, homeopaths, um, chiropractors, they do not share their information about what they're doing with the patient to the conventional me medical specialist. And I think when that door opens up and that communication is transparent, you're gonna see a lot more alliances between conventional and uh, alternative medicine. But that, that dialogue has to um, become more transparent. Of course, you wanna know. You wanna know the outcome of that visit. And that's where you come in. I know you two share many patients. And right. you follow up with Dr. Nadu. Right, ever since uh, we first started our relationship, every time I received one of his kids, I sent back a summary report because I know just from my medical background, uh, especially, is that that's what you do with physicians. We always write progress record. We need to communicate with every team member, whether it's a physician or a case manager, a social worker, or a dietitian. And this, this communication is true collaboration. It's true integration so that he's not in the dark and then 
hopefully I'm not in the dark with him either, but I haven't been because he would send me what his thoughts are, what his notes are, what his diagnosis is. I would send him back what my thoughts are, my findings are, what my plan is, and what, what I believe needed to be done. And it was just a back and forth, common sense, collabor collaborative effort for the good of the patient. By the way, thank you for all of the patients that we have referred to you, all the viewers that we have referred to you, who became clients of yours and then probably patients of yours. I mean, this is really a, a good relationship. How did you two meet? As an alternative practitioner, complementary practitioner, and as a physician, what was the big day when you two shook hands and said, okay, this is good? Do you um, remember? Yeah, uh, it, it came through the essential oil um, relationship with another uh, mutual friend. You like essential oils? Uh, love them. They're very, very safe, um, easy to use for children. You don't have to force things down the mouth. Right. These are things that you can use topically. But as a result of that experience, I got to meet an individual who um, it, it knows medicine, was a registered nurse, can speak the language, and I saw the results in my own personal health and then with the patients that I referred to Dr. Schulenberg. And what would the typical patient, uh, Julia, that Dr. Nadu referred to you, what would that patient look like? This isn't a patient with just a pediatric problem. Is this a more problematic, maybe a toxic mm -hmm. uh, right. pediatric? They, they have a toxin overload, a toxin burden. A lot of times they have um, a blockage in their detox pathways because of a genetic SNP or multiple genetic SNPs. And um, they have maybe fevers of unknown origin and um, something much more complex like he has referred to before. Yeah, I mean, this is such a good relationship. Uh, folks, understand that pediatrics is an important uh, business. Get your kids to a good pediatrician. Make sure you concur with that pediatrician. Nothing worse than walking out of a pediatrician's office saying, I'm never going back to the, share that information, be open, be candid. Ask the pediatrician, might you refer to other therapists? If the answer is no, then he or she knows everything, and that's no. just not the case. You two have such a wonderful relationship. Uh, Ruth and I have spoken to several people that we have referred to you who love you, so I'm so glad this union is now together. You're in the Dallas area. Yes, sir. You're in the Dallas area. Uh, just a great synergistic blend of two wonderful people. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. You know, a lot of information. My take home message, yes, there is a supplement that helps with tummy problems. We talked about ulcerative colitis, we talked about dysbiosis, GI problems. Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, I took two of those this morning. I love this product, folks. This is a living probiotic. Thank you, Dr. Ross, for coming in and continuing our education. Thank you also to Dr. Schulenberg and Nadu. One's a pediatrician, one's a naturopath. You see how synergism exists. Pediatricians don't know everything. Naturopaths don't know everything. But you got a 50% better chance when you got both of their opinions, right? So thank you to both of them for coming in. Dr. Trowbridge, always love end pain. Always love seeing him. Folks, may I remind you, you can ask me a question. Doug, I have, you fill in the blank. Might that be linked to fungus? Now it's Monday and Tuesday afternoons. Go to our website, knowthecause.com. Join me every Monday and Tuesday afternoon. Until then, God bless. Bye-bye. The preceding program, Know the Cause, was paid for by Mediatrician Incorporated.